What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy, Beehive Radio Shout in. Stepping in the building, I got my Texas fam off in this thing. Lil Flip, what's good with it, boss? Hey, man, say, man, what it do? How you doing, my guy? Man, feeling good, feeling great, but you ain't in this thing by yourself. Reed Dollars, what's good with it, my dog? What's going on, man? Thanks for having us up Man, here. appreciate yes. y'all stepping honor. off in sure. this thing, man. Uh, no problem. Sure. I mean, first of all, what y'all boys doing in the A-Town, man? What the fuck? Man, hey, man, say, man. My guy Reed Dallas, man, he had a, a, a secret battle, you know. Come and, on, yeah, and that's all we can say about it. it. It was a secret. It was a secret for real. And it was a lot of dope people there. And when it do come out, you know, the people will be like, "Wow, you know." For sure. Oh, it, it was great. So yeah. answer me this: so y'all can't say what y'all saw and what y'all experienced. Y'all just gotta let the people find out when they find out. Yeah, True. shout out to ARP. That's the way he put it together. He wanted, to, you know, a lot of battles. They usually give you the promo first. They give you the face offs first. Facts. So what he did is he ain't, he wanted to do everything quietly. Just yeah. get all the footage, do the face offs. That's hard. And, and release it later. So okay. right. it was a dope little star studded event. Flip definitely came through and brought that that big star presence in that motherfucker. Big old facts. There was some fire battles in that bitch, and uh, it was lit. As a freestyle king yourself, Flip, when you see them battling. Do you get the itching a little bit and want to jump in there and start man, raising heads? I'll be asking them too. Man, <laughs> man I, and the crazy part is I used to battle. Yeah. Like I started off rap battling, free, but you know, we freestyle. You know? That's right. They remember they shit, which I salute them because, man, I can't remember all that. <laughs> I tell them all the time. Like, like I be like, bro, I salute y'all. Infinity salute, man. But yeah, nah, man, I, I love it, bro. Like, watching the way the mind works, like, Putting these words together and, and watching these young cats and the OGs just still, you know, exercise, sharpen their mind, Come like on. coming up with lines. Cause this was this is what I was always taught. Talk to me. I was taught that when you want to do music or consider yourself an MC or a lyricist, the goal is to wow a person when when you rap. Okay. So like if I'm jamming your verse and I ain't hearing you say nothing that's like oh shit make me rewind, re, you know rewind that oh did you hear what he said. Yeah. Why I can't think of that? Like, I feel like you ain't do your job. Fair now, is. I do agree that all records ain't records for you to be lyrical on. Sometimes you got to make a club record or a record for the ladies, and, you know, you can't be all lyrical miracle just yeah. telling the chick how you want to dissect her panties <laughs> to the third degree of Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> you feel me? A square time, B square. Come on now. Uh, I want to, you know, you can't get to... Yeah, so you, you just got to know how to do it. But I love it, bro. I, I love being around it. And I got my own rap battle league, which is called Lil Flip Rap Battle League. That's hard. Yeah, I, I put it on hold. Like, we did a few battles and stuff. The same guy won, like, back to back. And then I put it on hold and started working on my podcast, which yeah, I got to yeah. bring you on my podcast. I need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah nah, I see you, you get busy with yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, I be having yeah. fun, man. And, my God. Uh, so I've been doing that, um, working on a movie called King Life with the soundtrack. Yeah. Underground legend movie about my life coming. What? Um, me and Zero, we got Kings of the South Part Two coming. My God. Me and Tom Tom, we got Made in Texas Part Two coming. Yes, sir. Um, La Clova Nostra, which, mm, is, which is me presenting the newer artists that's around me, along with Reed Dollars becoming a member of Clover G. Yes, yeah. And um, that drops St. Patrick's Day on. You know, that's the day DJ Screw gave me my Freestyle King plat. My God. So you know, between that, man, I, I just been working smart, and then I drop Flip Mayweather. Um, a mixtape like probably a year ago now, mm. and the only reason go I put download that, out, that, go stream that. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's crazy. It's like it's, it's my favorite project that I put out thus far. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in a whole different bag. Like I got a record called Flex Mode going crazy. Yeah, okay. Um, and then I got Black Badge Boy, yes, but sir. the record is crazy. Kyle Girl Collection for the ladies, bro. It's crazy. Sing that record right there, boy. Yeah, and it got my guy. Big, XO on it, you know what I'm record, saying? Big XO on a few, he on like three records on there. So I'm in a different zone, bro. And then I got the Exotic Pop going and the Triopoly Board Games and Shells.com. Yeah. We got apps that turn your phone to an iCloud computer. I, I hooked up with King Lee and, and Joe Son with the blockchain and the coin Ooh. and crypto where we about to like help change poverty. And yeah. We on some help the community shit. You I know? feel that. I yeah. feel that. You got Reed Dollars in this thing, though, man. Yeah. Who, How did y'all boys lick thought? up, man? Who would have thought? I mean, me and Flip, we had a relationship for a few years now. Yeah. Um, 
I think our first run in wasn't even really musically. It was like, I think he knew who I was. I knew yeah. who he was, but I remember you came down to the city, came to Philly. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And he was looking for some gas, looking for some shit, made sure Big Bro was right. <laughs> Come on and now. Yeah, and it, it, we just we just we just kept our relationship from there and we just kept seeing each other, kept being around each other. And, yeah. You know, it just stemmed from there. But that nigga genuine, man, that cloth really sold out. I just wanna say that. And I've been saying that a lot. Like, a lot of motherfuckers, like, Reed Dollars is a legend. Yeah. And um, a lot of motherfuckers, you got a lot of big motherfuckers that said my name. I'm I'm an Eminem rap guy video, dog. I, go. I got legends like Mace that sat next to Biggie that salute me. Like, yeah. But it's weird that nobody ever came to really fuck Come with on. me. Come on. You know what I mean? Flip was the first nigga to do that, really. Like, nah, let me hear your songs. Like, nigga really listened and really yeah. took the time out, so. Yeah, it's Clover G's enough for sure. Coming out of Philly with it though, man. I mean, what is it like putting your stain on the game in the city of brotherly love? It's a blessing, man. Um, 20 plus years in this shit. Been doing it since we was babies. Yeah. 35 now. Been doing it since I was about fucking 9, 10. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. It's just, it's a blessing to still be here. Um, and coming from Philly, yeah, you got to be that. You know, they call me the general. Yes, sir. Philadelphia is a hard city. If I wasn't the general, I couldn't be calling myself the general. Niggas would have been, <laughs> <nigga would've laughs> been, yeah, nigga would have been trying to <laughs> test, test me. But it's, it's love, man. I earned that title. I've been out there putting on forever. Yeah. And um, it's just a blessing to still be here. Look, what was it about Reed that made you say, hey, man, I got to get him on the team, though? Man, for me, I didn't help a lot of artists, put on a lot of artists, gave money, jewelry, Cars, pay child supports, <laughs> just everything you could do to show your brother or somebody you believe in them. Like, hey man, I got you, you know. Yeah. Because I believe in, like, if you got more, you help the people around you that got less. You That's know what right. I mean? But sure. everybody ain't got the right mind, and and I care more about a person's aura and energy before I do biz with you. You know yeah. what I mean? And he he basically like had a a real pure like genuine aura and energy about him. Like, and he was just straight up off the bat, like, hey man, I'm just trying to work. Like, I, I know I'm a legend in this rap battle shit, but I'm, I'm trying to really fuck with the music. I got real records that can mm. be played next to, and yeah, he, he sent me the music, and I'm like, damn, I'm like, oh shit, like, okay. Then he shot me a record to get on, me and he, me, him and Cassidy, we got a record mm. we did for his album. And yeah. Then he got an artist named Young Steph he worked with who sing on a lot of his hooks and like on his verses, and it, it just adds this extra like, you know flavor yeah. and sauce and um i'm just like damn this is like real big sounding music not yeah. no local joker regional facts you know fire facts. market music like yeah. he got a record called five sold out that shit stupid um then he got hit his street single kyle rambo like that's stupid so yeah. we just started working i had a event out there his way went to his house um Man, we recorded. Flip pulled up at the crib, nigga. <laughs> nah, who can say that, though? Come on. Grandma was there, wifey was there. That's something I'm never going to forget. My God. No cap. And we recorded. We recorded records, and he sent me records, and the records just started piling up. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm doing La Clover Nostra Part 2. We we go present Jay Bird, you know what I'm saying? He's from Jersey, but he Haitian, you know? Yeah. And uh, we got Pillar from Augusta, Georgia, you know what yes, I'm saying? Yes, yes. Uh, we got Young Nuck from Minnesota, you know yes, what I'm saying? Sir. Reed Dollars from Philly, man, yes, and sir. me from Cloverland, and the other artists, Street Action, and um, Chris Go, Young Nuck, Ice, Rev City, Young Jew, um, who else? Big Shasta, yeah. C-Note, I'm trying to, uh, who else we got all on the damn project? It's it probably some names that I forgot. Oh, we got Zero on the album. Shout yes, out sir. to my bro, Zero. Yes, sir. We got a record called Don't Love Me. Ooh. La Clover Nostra, but the first singles is the uh, La Clover Nostra Cypher with me, Reed Dollars, Pillar, Nuck, and Jay Bird. And then the record is for the ladies called She Don't Love Me Love Me with Zero. So mm. when I drop records, I like to put one for the streets and one for the ladies. That's right. And, and, you know, mix it you up. You got to work both sides, man. You know it, man. I mean, Flip, you done been in the game a long time, man, since yeah. the, since a juvenile of this thing. Man, okay. since a damn infant. <laughs> like, literally, my whole family do music. So my, my family, you born, I'm born in it, not sworn in it. Like, I was in studios, church, choir, all that from when I was born. My grandmother was a choir director. Yeah. So I'm in a studio. I'm around music, hearing mm. notes. It's pianos in my house. You know, I, I learned how to play uh, LL Cool J. You know, I yeah. need love first. <laughs> Come then, on. Yeah, like... 
So I, I really do this, man. Like, for real. What yeah. is it that got the fire back in you now, though, Flip, that got you traveling around the country letting these folks know that you back in land of SmackDown, though? Well, the crazy part is, like, I never stopped traveling. Ooh. The thing about me, if you go to my IG, Lil Flip Seven One Three, you can see my lifestyle still the same, still riding double R's, That's the black right. badge double R's, you, you know, the, the black badge ones, the more expensive ones. <laughs> you did, and um, with the base, come with on, the, with the stars in the ceiling, but they got shooting stars. You know what I mean? We, oh. had, we had the regular star, but not a star shoot. You know, I'm with you, and and so. I stay tour and I never stop. Mm -hmm. I'm the artist that goes to the places that everybody else skip over. Mm. Like when the major labels are like, oh, they don't have a real radio station there or yeah. ain't no stores. Nah, I don't go there. No, I'm going. Yeah. And that's why and how I run circles around everybody. So a lot of people, they have this stigma of like, oh, if you ain't on TV or if millions of dollars ain't being put behind your single, or you ain't in this movie, or blah, 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 you at home, you fell off, you ain't doing nothing. But, like, bruh, like, man, we kings in Texas, man. We don't, yeah. Even though I travel everywhere, yeah. still, till this day, till this day. And But, like, it, I could not leave Texas if I didn't want to and still make millions. It's so I, I sold so many records in my state alone, like 10 million albums in my state alone. This mixtapes, albums, hand-to-hand, -hand, gave away shit. I'm, That's what I want you to get into, Flip. That yeah. whole Texas thing, because I've been here for a long time. You yeah. could go go. You could go platinum inside of the state of Texas alone. Okay. So there's no reason to even leave Texas. Right. Talk to me about that flavor there, man, and why is it so easy for y'all to be able to travel that state mm -hmm. and trap that thing out? Let's see. Let me break it down like this. Like Come baby on with food. it. Mm -hmm. It's like this. I had great mentors that came before me. You Come know on. what I'm saying? Of course, God, That's my dad, right. my grandpa, grandma, my mother. But as far as the music business and, and how to maneuver out here, my mentor and the person that I wanted to be like was Jay Prince. Mm. So basically, I, I soaked up all the game as a sponge and studied everything that he was doing and yeah. how he maneuvered and how he spent his own money um, to, to put his artists out and, you know, how to pull up in these fly cars and then people from my hood, the OGC note and D-Red pulling up in the Lexuses and drop yeah. tops and the candy paint, the clovers in the hair, diamonds in the teeth. So, yeah, like, bro, I, I had the best example. So I just, then DJ Screw as Come well. On. So I was able to sit back and just watch how everybody did what they did took my notes and I'm just like all right I'm gonna apply this so I'm like all of them the yeah. Tony Drapers and the Jay Prince like in one body as far as like knowing what they know like exactly. how like if you want to compare it to basketball you know you got the the people that came before you yeah. know the Dr. J's and stuff and the Michael Jordan and uh, with LeBron you. so it's like with new technology and new stuff the new Terminator gets souped up come on like <laughs> you feel me like so Thanks. and then Floyd Mayweather you know what I'm saying yeah. like I patterned a lot of my business dealings the way he did it. You know, once he started taking over his own career and throwing his own fights and setting his price, like, well, I'm gonna let the promoter make 20 million and let them only pay me five or whatever. Yeah. When I can bring myself Facts. and get the real gate, Come get on. the 50 and get the 100 and charge these people all this money to wear they logos on my boxes. Come and on. Had a Burger King man walk me out and, <laughs> had, yeah, that yeah. type of shit. So, you know, that's that's what I'm about, man. Diversifying my portfolio just to make the Roly glow. <laughs> Talk to me about a young man meeting DJ Screw, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, from the A-Town side of things, you hear about the myth and the legend, and it was like, what was that man doing in Texas that allowed him to lay the smack down over the whole state and man. put it in a chokehold, man? Well, since you brought up his name, you know, we are the screwed up clicks, so we, I brought you a double cup of exotic pop. Appreciate it. And I brought you one of my leprechaun red cream sodas. Hell my yeah. exotic pop flavor, so. I can dig it. That's you, man. That's so, up. And then I'm gonna send you a care package like a box and all I that shit that. so you can drink, but I say, man, he got the plaques and then I yeah. gotta get you a plaque. I gotta get you one of my plaques. Come on with it. For the sure. Flip Mayweather, man. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we you know we go we go fill, we go fill this shit up with artifacts, exactly. man. Exactly. But um, man, meeting Screw, bro, I was always at the right place at the right time, battling. Yeah. It was this teenage club called um, Club Unique, and then one called Stadium Bowl, which was a skating rink. 
where you could skate in the front and, you know, dance in the back. The teenagers, you know, yeah. get dropped off. And he used to DJ up there, and he seen me freestyling. And he was like, bro, you can really rap, rap. Nah, and I just rap for him, freestyling, yeah. talking about what he had on. It just, he was like, nah, you different. Yeah. He like, you real different. And he had already, like, seen me around hanging with C-Note and the Body Boys. He was like, you the one that's on that, you know, Diamonds in Your Face rap. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah, that, that's me. Like, so when he was able to put the face with the records, because mm. he been around me multiple times, yeah. and I was just in the cut, like, waiting my time. Keeping like, it cool. Yeah. yeah. They call so my name. I'm here. I'm going to bite his off. I don't give a damn how old <laughs> everybody is. I'm going to, they're going to be like, yeah, that little nigga hold his own. And that's what I did, bro. So meeting him, it, it just lit a fire up under me, man. And I did the freestyles with Screw. And then at the time, North Side and South Side, it was like, you know, beef. Yeah. And so... I am the first person out the screwed up click to go to the north side and do a freestyle on the Swisher House tape. Mm. And everything was cool. And then I signed Lil Run, who's from yeah. the north side. So I used to always be in Rosewood. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the hardest, you know, roughest parts on the north side. You yeah. Know, you know, Fifth Ward, one of the most gangster parts as well. Yeah. You know, and I got family on the north side. So mm. while that whole thing was going on, I'm still over there, you know what I'm saying? Fucking with my people. and. The crazy part, my biggest freestyle is a record called We Blow In, though, mm -hmm. I-45, which was on a Swisher House tape. Crazy. So, like, an artist I work with, my brother Crisco, he got a show called Say No to Sco. He yeah. starts off his intro with We Blow In, though. <laughs> yes, sir. And so, and so pretty much, <laughs> so. I went back and shot a video to that freestyle, which was on my Leprechaun album, so... I'm going back to my old records that people grew up and, and, and shoot videos to, and I'm finna fuck their head up. So I'm un, I'm unlunching multiple videos on Flip Fridays. Yeah, new shit, new content. We 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 just since since, since they wanted to let me take over verses and call me the verses freestyle killer, <laughs> I say why not take advantage? So yeah, yeah. I just say I'm just gonna take advantage of the verses and I'm gonna go even harder and smarter because I have been moving around B high. Yeah, and I just want to commend you. You know, like the reason I'm here is because I, I pay attention to the culture. You know, What's up? me having a podcast. I didn't put my podcast. I came up with the idea for my podcast like eight years ago. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't want to rush into it. I like to study, you know what I mean? So I sat back and I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna just sit back and see how it goes, study yeah. the analytics, you know, see what to do, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I just sat back and watched the Howard Stearns and Joe Rogan yeah. and the Joe Buttons, just everybody do their thing, drink champs, yeah. all my people just, you know, and I'm like, okay. And then the pandemic happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this is time for me to do my podcast. Exactly. And so I was maneuvering out through the pandemic safely with, yeah. I probably spent about five bands, eight bands on sanitizer. Yeah. Yeah, nigga, I stayed wiping. <laughs> I'm, wiping we, down. I'm doing elbows. Exactly. I'm doing I don't smoke with people no more. <laughs> oh, them days over. Yeah, ain't nobody passing no blunt yeah, around. Yeah. No more. You ain't going to kill me yeah, with no blunt. Yeah, so, you know, that's what I've been on, bro. I've been on that business. Okay. Back to that screwed old thing, yeah. man. I mean, when you talk about that screwed up click and just the chokehold that y'all had in Texas, man, right. what was it like being a part of that movement? And what was Texas like during that time when y'all were putting it down for the time? Bruh, like, to be able to walk down Worthen High, which which is my high school, my alma mater, Worthen, yeah. like as a senior, bro, 18 years old, the record Diamonds in Your Face was like in rotation, like yeah. in probably 25 markets, but H-Town definitely, they played it all day, every day. Yeah. And I'm walking down the hall, people just, you know, singing it, and then my freestyle come out, and it mm -hmm. just, it, it was like, like, man, like, the, I'm the coolest guy at Worthen, mm -hmm. man. Like, man, it was awesome times, bro. I, I'll never forget it. When you think about your legacy, man, and where it started, what was that tipping point for you when you realized that it was going down and that you would be able to have a career in rap, though, and this just wasn't no fun thing that you was doing with the homies after school or at the lunch table? Man, it's multiple things, man. Mm -hmm. Like, me, me just being in the streets, making money, um, seeing a few homies catch cases, and then I'm, I'm a real spiritual person, you know what I yeah. mean? I, I go with my energy. Like, if my energy tell me not to do something, uh -huh. I ain't gonna do it. I'm gonna go with my first mind, because a lot of times when I go against my first mind, that's when some dumb shit happens. That's right. Like you, be, you be at the club, and you get that feeling like, man, all right, I did what I need to do. Come on. It's get time to go. Yeah. yeah. And then you you don't do it, and you wanna hang out, you chilling, and motherfuckers start fighting, and you like, bro, I, I, 
So, or, or, or how somebody book you for something, and then after you're done with it, somebody like, hey, what y'all want to do? Let's just go, let's just go do something random. Like, yeah. nah, dang, I ain't getting no bag. If Come I ain't on. obligated to be there, you ain't gonna see me there. Come on, man. Yeah. So, I stay out the way, my guy. So now, when it came back to your career, though, man, what were the songs that just kind of took Texas by storm, and you mm -hmm. knew that it was about to go down, and it wasn't no turning back, though? Man, so I, I was able to have, for me, it's like I had a attack plan, right? I mm. had, I had multiple records that did different things that made that shit like crawl like a spider, like. Yeah. So I had, you know, the. I-45 freestyle, that was crazy, then the freestyle on the screw tape. And then what happened, I had a record called G's and Ballers that like was an underground coat. And then I had a record called I Can Do That. Mm. That ended up being like my biggest first yeah. like solo hit. So with those other freestyles out, and then I Can Do That coming and us going everywhere from the Midwest, everywhere. I was still going everywhere before I had the major deal. Yeah, yeah. I didn't wait till my major deal to say, oh, I'm going to go to Atlanta. I've been yeah. coming out here Come on. with Big Oom Camp. Yeah. Them was what the up, first no people. Yeah. 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 Them, them the first people to like really, really embrace me. So exactly. me and Baby D, we did a whole bunch of my God. music. What we up, though, D? Yeah, we used to be at, over there at the house all the time. Look, Corey started yeah. making beats. and <laughs> Yeah. Funky, DJ Funky Larry James. And Come on the, now. All that. Like, so, you know, I used to be out here a lot, man, and I got fam out here, man. So, yeah. you know, that's what that is. Okay, when I stepped into the scene with Flip and really got acquainted was when you dropped that uh, This Is The Way We Bow. The Way We Bow. Yes, that sir. thing hit and went crazy yes. as hell, okay. Sure. See, I can sure. do that, made them like, look. Okay. And then The Way We Bow, like after we got the deal, yeah. The Way We Bow came out and we just boom, 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 went everywhere. Then we double backed up with You Gotta Feel Me and then The Sunshine. That's why it was like a spider. I had these different records. Yeah. Some shit on Swisher House tapes, some screwed up click tapes. Like, people was fucking with me for different reasons. Some people like to freestyle, flip. Some people like to, you know, like yeah. I got different layers of me. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. have one style. You can put me on a record with anybody and I, I'm going to ride, ride the beat, body the beat. Sure. With boys being able to get that money in Texas without the deals and stuff like that, what was it that made you go ahead and sign a deal and step into the majors? I mean, the main reason, $22 million. <laughs> like, That's a good reason. And not giving up my creative control, you know what I mean? And, and, and having a label deal and being a CEO. Like, so I had an artist deal and a label deal, and I had artists under me, so I had, like, different budgets that, you know, I had access to. And okay, what was going through your young-ass mind, though, Flip, when they slapped you with that 22, though? Man, I was just like, like, wow, like, this, it, it's really happened. Mm. Now, the thing about it is I've I been had mil millions of dollars before I even did the deal, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so before we go to the deal, then take me back to getting those first M's before right. the deal. What was right. that grind like, and how the hell did you come across that money? Well, the, the first meal I got, I made in the streets, Thanks. you know what I'm saying? And then, like, off the music, when the M's started coming, doing those mixtapes and freestyles, like, yeah. I was picking up so much bread, like, I was picking up more money I was picking up for shows for albums. Like, I go to a town, I go do a show, okay, I get that, but then I go to like four stores and drop off like all these albums. They want yeah. like 400, they want 300. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. So I was like, damn, I'm picking up 20, 30. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I just kept on going, bro. Yeah. I kept on going with it, man. And you you give people stuff. I gave a lot of free stuff away too, though, bro, mm. to get to where I'm at. Okay. A lot of people they get so caught up in like I gotta sell my shit, I gotta sell it, that you would risk knowing that you only pay fifty cent or a dollar for mm. the CD, and you got a room full of thirty people. Damn, don't did nobody buy none. You go let these people go home and not have your stuff. Come on, fuck that. Go on, take the hit. Exactly. Ask the motherfuckers out because you may never see those people again Come and you on. don't know who they are. Go on, take that loss for that little, you know, uh, thirty bucks. Yeah, that's what it's costing you. Yeah, Thanks. you want to sell them for five and ten. And Somebody it. gave me Jeezy Trap a dime mixtape for free. He tried to sell it to me. I said, yeah. Hey man, I ain't got no goddamn money. Right. He gave me that damn CD for free, and that was the best free gift I ever got in my damn life. Yeah. And shout out to Jeezy. Come on. I got, man, and the crazy part about this, man, I, I ain't never really tell his story. Like, like Jeezy, he bought a verse from me 
um, we got a record called Don't Play With Me Money. Mm. Like before, it's on one of his older albums. And um, before, like he did the Dev Jam deal and yeah. all that, and before Trapper Die. It's on, the, it's on the internet, though. We had a record called Don't Play With Me Money, and he came down to Houston, and mm. we did the verse, man, and he paid me, man. And, man, I was, it was I had a whole bunch of shit going on at the time, man, but, man, I should have figured out some kind of way to do some kind of deal. Because <laughs> when, he, when he played me the record, like, I'm like, damn, this nigga jamming. Like, yeah, I hadn't yeah. heard his music before. Yeah. I'm like, this nigga jamming. I'm like, damn, this nigga hard. Like, yeah. I knew he was go. Go. Yeah, I just yeah. I just felt it, but I, I was like had so much shit going on, so many people I was I was responsible for that I just wasn't in that mode. But man, I I, I would have figured out a way to facilitate <laughs> some kind of deal to, to work with Jeezy, man. But I'm proud of him, man. That's my brother, man. Yes, I sir. see him every day, man. So congrats on your new child. Yes, sir. And, and getting married, man. Young Jeezy, man. My God, that's a beautiful thing. So now you saying that you was getting the money out of the mud. Mm -hmm. Now it was time to get slapped with that 22 million, man. So I mean, how did that change when you had to amplify the money? Mm -hmm. After you was already getting to the money, but now right. you got a real deal major right. behind you. And you got 22 million to figure this stuff out with. Right. I mean, my mind frame was I gotta just, I gotta keep going. I gotta go extra harder. I can't, can't right. play with them. Right. And, um, my goal was to do things my way and not lose my creative control because most people, when they get deals, like they want you to mm. go, hey, go spend a hundred k on this producer for yeah. one beat. <laughs> go pay this dude two hundred and fifty. You can't, you know, like I ain't do that with Underground Legend. Yeah, like I, I was like on some, I'm gonna work with who I want to work with, and still was able to go multi platinum off of that. Right. And then on you gotta feel me. I started working with a few, you know, higher name producers. You know what I'm saying and and, and build my way up, man. But yeah, that that was what I needed to do. I needed to show my goal this whole time was to show the world that Houston has people that can rap about more than just one topic. Mm. They limit the South as not being lyricists off top as a whole. But yeah. like when it comes to Houston, a lot of them think that like we only can rap about candy paint, yeah, can you know swangers or yeah. double cups and grill, like yeah. So, you know, I, I got to let these motherfuckers know now nah, we got motherfuckers with bars. We got lyricists. You know what I'm saying? We got people that's going to make you be like, oh, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, we got face with the storytelling you type packs. shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Hell of a storyteller. Come on. You know what I mean? And now you got Flip that's going to hit you with them bars. You got Ro that's going to hit you with the singing. One of the exactly. first people to hit you with that singing and rap and shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then yes. now you got Killer Kylie on that's yes, going to bar you to death. And then you got South Walker <laughs> doing his thing dripping. But, hey, he can rap too, Come though. on now. He can rap, rap. When South Walker want to rap, rap and got bars, like, you coming oh, with he, it. he can do it. Yes, he can sir. do it. So I'm, I'm proud of my whole city, man. And, and where we at as a whole, then you got my guy on the wild, you know what I'm saying? B. Kang. B. Kang. Yeah. I'm proud of him. He been doing it. That yes, motherfucker sir. is like the new version of Luke. That you, you <laughs> yeah. feel he giving hey, me four hell. Hey, <laughs> hey, my guy be having fun on stage, hell man. Yeah. Hey, don't be no cucumbers and no no stores <laughs> in, hey, around man. the world when he on tour, man. You ain't never lied. <laughs> you ain't never lied. So now I gotta ask you this though. Like a pimp with David Banner. That was one of my favorite flip features right there, okay? Like when you heard that track, what did that do to you, man? Because that's one of those tracks that'll forever go down in infamy mm -hmm. as a Showfire party starter. Nah, the crazy shit. part is that. That's about the shirt right yeah, there. I was say that's his logo yeah. right there. You know, I know my bro logo. Yes, sir. Um, man, that record, he came to Houston. I've been knowing Banner, man, Um, like on some street shit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, we've been knowing each other in crossing paths, and we finally got to do music. Mm -hmm. And like, I've been a fan of uh, a Banner. I've been knowing Banner like back when he was doing the Crooked Letters mm. album and stuff, and they had them records with Pimp, Pimp and C. Bun. Yeah, yeah, them was some hard <laughs> records, man. You, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so he came to H Town. Was like, I got this record. Played it. I'm like, oh, okay, we in there. What we talking about? Like a Pimp, you know? It was a vibe and. The thing that separates me from a lot of people that write records and, and stuff like that, like sometimes I construct my stuff to have like crowd participation. Like mm. I'll put certain 
like words or similes or metaphors or I'll drop the beat on certain parts yeah. so the crowd can do it. Exactly. So in the part when I'm like, what is y'all saying? Like yeah. you drop the beat at the show, I just do my ear like that and the crowd say it. Yeah. And then when I'm like, bitches ain't shit. Yeah. I drop the music, they go crazy, you know, choo choo, they look yeah. that. I drop the beat, the crowd, you know what I mean? Like, bro, I, I really do this so I know yeah. I, it, when you are able to spit your bars and do what you do, but still figure out a way to get them bars off and do crowd control and participation, you go forever be able to have the word, you know, the world saying, hey, and like on the way we buy at the beginning, hey, yo, yo like, you know. But when that song went crazy and it tore up the clubs, though, because I know, especially here in the A, that was one of those songs, you go to the bounce on Bankhead, we waited on that thing to right. come on. Man. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, I mean, what was that like having a club banger that was going across the world? Man, it was, it was like dope for me to have like a pimp going on. Then at the same time, Naughty Girl with Beyonce going Facts. on. Uh, tear It Up with Young One and Chingy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Tear It Up with Young One, DMX and David Banner. Then the record I had with Chingy, Baller Baby Remix. And, mm -hmm. Rock and roll with Fam Lay, mm -hmm. Ride Spinners with 3-6, you know, all, all that, man, uh, uh, Rainbow Colors with 3-6. But yeah, man, like that, that, that crunk music, if it wasn't for Banner, man, I, I wouldn't perform as great as I do now because mm. touring with him and seeing him jump all on <laughs> basketball rims and take his, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you never know what's gonna happen. Come on. It, it just made me not be, because in Texas, we laid back, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I. You know, we, we laid back, play a May, you know, and hey, it be turned. Come on. Be lit, nigga, nigga, what's up, shout it like nigga. Exactly. I remember the first, like the first time I came and did a concert out here, bro. Yeah. You know uh, what it was? Was it the way we bow? Was the way we bow? Nah. I think it was, uh, was it game? I think it was game over. Yeah, okay. Game, Game Over was out and stuff like that, and I came out here and I had a, a concert, and it was me and Scrappy. Shout out to Scrappy. That's what up, though, Scrap? And um, I do my shit, you know, I'm boom, boom, do the Game Over, you know, they do like a pimp, you know, like, yeah. like they, they, they crunk, you know, like, man, Scrappy, come on after me. <laughs> we some head busters. Okay. <laughs> head busters, nigga. Man, them motherfuckers start going crazy, dog, and that bitch just like, yeah. I'm like, these niggas be turned up out here. Like, you know, we, we laid back in Texas, niggas yeah. sipping it. Man, niggas be turned up, man. But so after seeing that, I'm like, that don't mean I got to go jump in the crowd and all that kind of shit. But I, yeah. I do it if I'm doing EDM shows. You got to pick where you can crowd surf or they go drop your ass. Exactly. Like, bing bong, you going to be out of there. But yeah, man, that, that's that's the vibe. So traveling and perform with, performing with David Banner, man, it, it kind of just... Like man, you can you can just you know just you can turn up a little bit more, you know. Yeah. So some I be in different modes when I perform now. Yeah. But that record felt great, bro, to have a strip club anthem, even though it went everywhere. But like yeah. in a strip club, oh nigga, it was over. With. Yeah. So that's how I do it at my concerts <laughs> when I'm performing. Yeah. You know I do all the other stuff, and I be like, hey man, we took them everywhere, but man, let's take them to the strip club, <laughs> and then that shit come on, then you know we. Man, everybody turn into a pimp for two minutes. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Game over. Another one of those flip bangers that went crazy. When you heard that track, because see, that's one thing too. You understand when you hear a track yeah. and it's time to snap. Right. So when you heard that game over track, what went through your mind? And did you know that that was going to be one of the biggest uh, flip hits right there too? I ain't know, but when, so what had happened was, <laughs> like, <laughs> One of the the reps for the label, he had a producer who gave him the beat. Nick Fury had gave him the beat or some yeah. kind of ways. Some kind of way he had the beat though, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he was trying to get me to rap to it and I didn't want to do it because some people from my hood, well, from my hometown had a record on the, you know, beat with that same Similar. sample. Yeah. And then Benny Siegel, he had a record called Mag Man on a Pac-Man beat, so I didn't want to do it, I'm like, it's too too close right yeah. now. Like it's people in my city with it. Yeah. Let's let's wait. Like if I'm gonna do it, but I don't wanna do it right now. Yeah. They kept begging me, begging me. I finished the album. And then they like, if we pay you, will, will you rap to it? So <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. So they paid me like I think I can't remember if they paid me fifteen or twenty. 
it was either ten or fifteen thousand dollars though. I made them pay me, and they paid me, and I went to New York, knocked it out. That's why on the first four words is all oh, shit. Y'all didn't fucked up and let me in this bitch because I was trying to curse. Yeah. So it wouldn't become a single. Damn. So it'd be like bleep bleep yeah. bleep bleep bleep. <laughs> like yeah, this ain't gonna make it, and it still fucking went. So hey, fuck it. I got paid a little extra <laughs> extra band dollars to rap for my own album to make a smash hit in this yeah. thing. Ryan Spittles with 3-6, though, man. I mean, that was another one of those bops that went crazy as well. Yeah. And then that whole versus situation. What right. was that like being part of history again man. when you saw all hell breaking loose? And you was like, what the hell's going on in this goddamn versus? Hey, bro. Hey, man. Say, man. Man, listen. For starters, we'll start with Ryan Spinners, man. 3-6, they was my label mates. Like, we both was on Columbia. Rest mm. in peace to Lord Infamous. Yes, Coops sir. Nicka. Yes, sir. Um, I got family in, in town in Orange Mound. You yeah. know, rest in peace to Kingfish. Yes, sir. Um, but look, it's like, that's fam, man. Like, 3-6, I always had them slappers, them them beats, them hooks, them hypnotized. They hip hypnotized camp and all that, like, minds and... Yeah, they beats really hypnotize your yeah. ass and make you want to do something. <laughs> Fuck some shit up, make some money, whatever your MO is. But they yeah. always was hit. them beats was hitting. Nigga. Thanks. And they always were, was able to secure dope records alone as well as dope features. Like even back in the days, remember them records they had with the yeah. hot boys and shit? Yeah, like yeah. They, we, I used to watch TV. <laughs> I think they was on Relativity back Yo, then. Bro. Man, them niggas was, I'm like, man, them niggas got records with the hot boys. Them yeah. niggas got, you know, even though C Note of the Bonnie Boys from my hood had records with the hot boys. Mm. Like, on the same album that Diamonds in Your Face is on, Third Coast Born, C Note, yeah. he got records with Birdman, Manny Fresh, everybody. Like, they used to come fuck with us in Houston. Like, yeah. we had diamonds and shit in our mouth. Like, yeah. when the hot boys first came out, they all had goals. Mm hmm. In H time, niggas start fucking with us. C yeah. C note, he the first nigga in the hood with diamonds in his mouth. Like, yeah. like niggas, you know, niggas upgraded their shit. Exactly. Nigga, we we, di we diamonds <laughs> in the teeth, nigga. You feel me? We double cupped up and yeah. But like, I fuck with them. And here's a fun baller fact. Talk to me. In the movie Baller Blocking, yeah, yeah. I'm in that movie. <laughs> the party scene where the party scene gets shot up. Yeah, like, yeah. Like me and C note, I, I got on Fubu, I think. Um, <laughs> But like I'm in there like real, real quick. But we was out there, man. My and God. they did that during the Cash Money Rough Riders tour, which I feel is like one of the dopest tours ever. Cause them dudes was coming out the Roly. Them dudes was flying over the damn crowd in a helicopter <laughs> in the arena, throwing like money out. Bro, it was like dope ass time, man. But we we fucks with them, man. We fucks with them the long way, man. Three six, man. I always do some dope shit. But um. Now back to this verses, man. <laughs> Bro, it was it was dope to be there. Like I tour a lot with Bone Thugs and Hormid. Okay. They're my brothers. We yeah. tour I tour more with Bone than I tour with Three Six. My God. We always booked on the same shows, me and Bone. Like we tour. Yeah. Um Man, I'm back there ready. They like, hey, spinners finna come up, I'm back there ready, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, getting a little za, inhale, <laughs> drinking some exotic pie, get my mind right. Pray. That's right. I'm going over my lyrics like multiple times because <clears throat> I'm used to performing spinners on my own. Yeah. So I don't usually have to wait for all eight verses to play. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Uh, so, so in my mind, I'm like, damn, I ain't heard they verses in a minute. <laughs> even, even though I know they verses. Yeah. Like, but I'm like, damn, okay, so I'm back there. Let me just go over my shit. Yeah. Because I don't know if the words go be on there or they ain't. So <laughs> once you on live TV, boy, you bet, yeah, his palms are sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> but my palms were sweaty. I was ready. <laughs> but, like, it, it was dope, man. So I'm back there, and I just hear, like, boom, 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 and, like, a whole bunch of, like, a stampede, like Jumanji. Yeah. Nigga. It was like, it's just like, nigga, <laughs> you don't know where the lines coming from, the bass, the tigers. <laughs> Dolomites, icebergs, <laughs> limbs, you don't know what's happening, nigga, what's going down, man? Yeah, yeah. And I just go to the back with Bob and G, and Bob got this look on his face like, shit, like, <laughs> bitter beer face, like, oh, shit, and then MJG, his phone is lagging a little bit, yeah. so I'm like, what happened? And then I looked on MJG phone, and I got to see it, I'm like, oh, shit, oh, oh that's what happened. I'm like, damn, man, it's over, bro, I ain't get to perform, <laughs> nigga, I'm like, fuck, they finna shut it down, nigga, I'm, and next thing I know, they like, nah, we, we everything cool. The views tripled. Come on. They went up, you Come know on. what I'm saying? And 
who they seen first at when the views came up. <laughs> I came right out. Come on. And hey, man. It all me. works out. And then I get the freestyle at the end. Woo. So I am not a versus freestyle killer, man. Yeah, the freestyle came, little flip. So I had fun, man, you know. That was a dope ass uh a battle, man. You damn right. And everybody got their own um assessment of who they think won and why. So let, let me play interview for Come on seconds. with it. 30 seconds. Read dollars respectfully. Yes. Who do you feel won the versus battle with Bone and 36 and why? I think <laughs> I think I think 36 probably won. Probably? I think they did win. Okay. Yeah, I just want to get the, you know, yeah, I, just wanna... I, think, I think they did win. I'm a fan of Bone Thugs and 36, but I mm -hmm. think 36 just got the hit list. Mm -hmm. Like and it's, you know, like a lot of the word you don't even know a lot of the Bone Thugs words. Like yeah. you just know a, like you know, you, we know the records, but mm -hmm. it's like you right. can't sing along to right. that shit. Like, like all of it. Yeah, you cannot yeah, you possibly I mean? sing it all. Yeah, so I think three six definitely pulled out the hit list on yeah. they got the and hit why? list for real. And why do you feel they won? But uh, because they got the hit list. Straight up, straight, They're straight hits. up. Over oh, still yeah. you, Mr. Be High. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna put it to you like this, Flip. I'm a big ass Bone Thugs and Harmony fan. Me too. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, I will yes. harmonize with these niggas as the sixth member of the group. I'm outside <laughs> of flesh and bone. You might have got me up there. Straight up. But when it comes to three six mafia mm -hmm. and them line of hits that raised me, right? I don't go against what raised me. Okay, right? right. Them boys, they got at least a good fifty hardcore hits that they could have played. I'm right. Serious. Some of them songs didn't even get played. Agreed. Okay, it was still some songs that I needed to hear <laughs> that didn't even get played. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that being, and then when it came to just getting the party started, it was the energy behind the music. Right. right. When it comes to energy, I'm a strong believer that that energy just kind of takes it to a whole nother level. Don't nobody want to, you know, we trying to party sometimes. Right. And then also when I go back to some of my favorite times in my life, I was in the club listening to a lot of that stuff. Right. And I mean, it takes me back to right. where, I mean, I would just be real. I didn't call so many niggas weak ass bitches off yeah. of Three Six Mafia, okay? <laughs> yeah. I got love for them. So I would just sit right down with Three Six. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Now, and that's that's what I feel too. And look, I'm, listen, I'm the biggest. Come on. I'm the biggest Bone fan. Come on. You know, like a lot of my harmonizing and, and singing <laughs> that I do on my records up under my vocals yeah. is like Bone Thugs Influence. Yeah. You know? I, I just feel like 3 Six kept coming. And 3 Six, their classics, they range from back then Ooh. to now. now. Like they have classics that can be, you know, this year, that year, like on a timeline. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? You ain't lying. And, and, and one of the best things Juice could have did was aligning himself with Wiz Khalifa and, and, and assisting the young cat Come as on. well as the young cat assisting the OG and them bonding and yeah. they got like Juicy like re reflame with the youngsters you know what I mean Taylor Gang cause shit. he went on a damn run Didn't when he it? got with Taylor Gang Didn't and it? it was like oh, wait a minute Juicy you the, <laughs> the greatest yeah. rapper of all time in this thing tripping, man. Come on. we stand tripping man <laughs> <laughs> so yeah like I, I feel like they just came you know more prepared and they just had a wider variety of, of, of classics yeah. that lasted from that time period to when, you know, Creeping On The Come Up in East 99 came up. Yeah. And then, like, everything after that, like, the singles wasn't pushed as hard. Yeah. And even though they had the I Tried and Take yeah. Me Home with Phil Collins and yeah. I Wish Busy Would Have Did. The, the, when thugs cried, this is what yeah. it's like. And, and I wish they would have started it off with first of the month. They didn't yeah. even perform that at all. And I was like, damn. That's the one? That's the yeah. one. The first of the month. Because like I say, I feel like can't nothing be first of the month. Can't nothing be, you know, Riding Dirty with Chameleon. That one yeah. Grammy. Um, Crossroads. Can't nothing Crossroads. beat that. The Pac song. Can't nothing Come beat on. that. The, the biggest song. Yeah. yeah, those are like five <laughs> records. You know, Thuggish Ruggish Bomb. Yes. They got like seven and nothing For the love beat. of money. Right. right. And then after that, it's like. It's, we it's going? 20 records. So, yeah, it's album so, cut time, So fella. that's why I kind of feel like it was like on some 13. If they played 20 records, like 13 to 7 type. Yeah. You know, and then the guests that came out, like, I mean, they brought, come on, man, they brought out Flip, they brought out Buck, uh, Bob G. They brought out Terrence Howard, Ooh, my yeah. guy. Yeah. They brought Lil Wayne out, yeah. bro. Wiz Khalifa, like, <laughs> Project Pack, Lachat, Gangsta Boot. Crazy. Like, 
motherfuckers came out, man. Like, Absolutely. like it was like I felt like I was at a war show, bro. <laughs> like, that's the best time of my life, man. And I'm glad it was friendly competition, and I'm yeah. glad they got you know the the shit resolved and everybody yeah. cool, man. But I'm I'm fan of fans and family. Both of those gangs and guys is my brothers, man. But I had fun at the verses, man. So, you know, salute to everybody. Triller, Swiss, Tim. We had a blast. Melissa, everybody that put that together. JoJo, Juicy, Bone, nothing but love, man. Can you speak to the relationship between you and Zero, Kings okay. of the South, when y'all get together and y'all jam? Right. What is it about y'all chemistry mm -hmm. that allows y'all to be able to get together and make classic records as well, though? Man. And, and the only reason we doing a part two, because mm -hmm. the fans are asking. Like, you got to do that, though. And um, so we were like, well, fuck it, we'll do a part two. But it, it's it's jamming. It's just straight dope music. You My know God. what I'm saying? Well, um, but, <clears throat> like, the jams that me and Ro do, like, I got chemistry with people, man. And it's three people that I got, like, the best chemistry with when I get in the lab. Mm. One... My cousin Big Shasta, when me and him get in the lab, yeah. it's like give and go. <laughs> you know, we freestyle, we heat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm gonna say? Like we we bread and butter. Yeah. Then, rest in peace, God bless his soul, the million dollar hook man, Big T. Same cat that's on wanna be a yeah. Uh, shot uh, that. that was my guy, like my yeah. uncle. Like yeah. I really took him under his wing. I mean yeah. took took him under my wing. Yeah. As far as like helping him push his music because he would do hooks for everybody. Yeah. But he never had nobody to really push him, push him to do a solo album mm. and capitalize off his own stuff. And we got a record called Lil Flip in the house tonight. What's called In House Tonight with me and him that went crazy on radio stations. And then we got a record called Candy on Chrome with mm. me and Big T. Like, see, I got these cult classics that may never have got played out here or in New York, but it's millions of people that can. So my layers of music isn't just started when the major label like put money behind me man mm -hmm. so you know my, my catalog is extensive and see that's why I have to dig into your brain flip because see y'all got this coke thing going on in Texas that y'all like to keep in Texas and not share with the world <laughs> y'all want to say we make a million dollars in Texas right. we ain't got to fuck with nobody else in the world <laughs> nigga we want to know what the hell's going on and, in Texas and that's the other thing and that's and that's why me and Zero is the third person he's yeah. the third person that I get in the lab with I got that chemistry Yeah. so when I'm in the lab with those three people like we just go ain't no ego it ain't no I want to make all the hooks yeah. and we just do what we do and we got our co-followers he got his co-following I got mine yeah Fans love us to collab, bro, and like we just hustle. Like yeah. we like on the East Coast, they can wake up and go down the street to Def Jam and all these labels put their demo. Like we didn't have that in Houston. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We had to get it on our own, My and God. so we did it. We go to the towns, do the car shows, take the pictures, go to the barber shops. I'm the I'm a king of the people. Yeah, it's two kind of kings: a tyrant mm -hmm. that's disrespectful and think they run everything and Think, you know what I mean? Treat people bad and blah, blah, blah. And then you got a king of the people. That's yeah. me. I'm going to work with the underdogs. That's right. I'm going to take the time to talk to a guy who buy a verse with, you know, from me. I'm going to work with a promoter. If the nigga say, man, I ain't got 10 bands to pay you, man, yeah. but I got 7,500, fuck it, let's run it. Yeah. I'm a hustler before I'm a legend and a rapper and this. Either I'm going to sit at home on a Saturday or I'm going to go take this 7,500 <laughs> just for me to spit these bars that Come I wrote on. 20 years ago on Saturday. My right. God. So I'm going to go get the bag. And then when I get in town, I'm going to do some features. Niggas want some interviews. People go give me free clothes, free side. By the time yeah. I look up, I didn't made my 15K, <laughs> what I'm really supposed to be getting. Exactly. So either way, it's go paying out. Yeah. Sell some merch. I'm going to get it. I'm a hustler. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, when it comes to UGK, the pimp and the bond, man, can you talk about the mentorship that you received from them in Texas right. and what they meant and what they mean to the state of Texas? Smoke some, bitch. Yes, sir. Um, some bitch. Rest in peace, Pimp C, and it's my mom, West, Mama West. Yes, sir. They, they taught me, man, overall was to not doubt who I am, never undervalue who you are. It's cool to give a person a, a discount. Um, the world will never pay you what you truly deserve, mm. but don't forget who you are. You know what I mean? Be mm. firm about what you want. And so 
besides the business aspect, musically, they taught me just not to be afraid to rep where I'm from. Yeah. Like, if you go back to the other, you know, a lot of the older records, you know, Pimp, his verses would be mainly, you know what I'm saying, Texas Rudy. Like, yep. with Candy, he popping trunks on your ass, it's Candy exactly. Paint. And then, you know, it might be a song about a whole different topic. But he, he finna nigga let you know, bitch. We I'm from gripping Texas. the grain, bitch. Exactly. I'm from Texas. These country rap tunes, exactly. bitch. Fuck how you feel, bitch. Yeah. And then Bun, you know, either he gonna feel like rapping about, you know, the swang and shit. Yeah. But most of the time, Bun gonna come on that bitch with some lyrical, you know, it's come just Billy Red Jelly. You know, <laughs> he gonna hit you with one of the murder verses and, come on. Bo you know, boil you down, man. That's so, right. Man, just seeing the way they moved and the things that they went through, record label wise, and. I had the pleasure to be in the studio with Bun B, like, when he had just, like, recorded um, his verse for Big Pimpin'. My God. Yeah, I was making the Leprechaun That's album. Heavy. And we was recording at the studio, and he was there. And I walked in, I had a, I had a session with Slim Thug. Mm -hmm. And um, he like, hey, Flip, check this out. <laughs> he played it. It was his, like his, he played me Big Pimp and his verse and stuff, and I'm like, I'm like, that's dope. Then he played, you know, and he was like, yeah, this is coming out soon, man. So I was able to hear, you know, Big Pimp and, and um, Bun, he would put me to the side and give me game, you know, here and there, man. And the fact that he would always rap on one of my OGs, C Note albums and the Body Boys albums, like he would always get them verses on the UGK cover. Riding dirty, that suburban is my homie, my OG C note. You know what I mean? Other Botany boys. Yeah. They returned the favor by putting C note on um, one of their albums, uh, Dirty Money. He was on mm. the record. We holding not diamonds. Yeah. We holding not. Yeah. C note is on there. So, you know, we always been around UGK man, and we always been proud of what they do and what they did, and we about to make history. Like the Houston rodeo has been in Houston for ninety years. Yeah. And they never let a rap hip hop group, you know, perform. Headline that thing. Yeah. So we got Bon B and friends, and yeah, he invited me and paid That's me hard, to man. perform. So come on. Yeah. So I'm about to do that. We we had the first hip hop uh, Super Bowl halftime with Dre yeah. and yeah. M and Fifth and uh, Kendrick and Mary J Blige, and now we finna have the first hip hop headline. At the Houston Rodeo, man, ninety years, man. That's you know, my God, heavy. yeah. Talk about just Texas and the culture, though, man, okay. and why it's so strong in Texas, and it hasn't been able to be infiltrated by other cultures. In Atlanta, I'm an A-town guy, right? Westside, born and raised. Uh, you really? see what I'm saying? Uh, really? So. I've seen the changes in Atlanta from just different cultures coming in and it turning into a melting pot. Right. I done had folks tell me it's more folks from out of uh, outside Atlanta in Atlanta than niggas it is uh, raised, born and raised in the motherfucker. Yeah. And I'm like, my God, when did the city turn into that? I grew up and I didn't know <laughs> nobody outside of 285, right. you know. So talk to me about that Texas culture and what that was about. It still is. Man, we, we, we support our own, man. We love our own. Um, and the main thing, you know, I think this problem happens though a lot of time though when you have people that feel like they knew you mm -hmm. or grew up with you, mm -hmm. they want you to do like discounts, you know what I mean, if you're yes. an artist. And, but but an out of towner, you know, they'll pay them 40, 50 bands, but certain legends, they'll be like, yeah, we, we only got this, you know what I mean? Mm. And we join just as many people as the people that, you know, they're- Exactly. Yeah, so, but, Overall, like people embrace people who, who who look like them and talk like them and speak their slang. You know, what I mean? everybody talk different. Like y'all right. talk different here. We talk different where we at. Memphis yeah, talk yeah. different. Yeah, Baltimore. You know, they talk different. How Come they say on. do. You know, they do. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, like they got their own slang. Exactly. In Memphis. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and, and my sister boss talk from Little Rock instead of car. She say car. <laughs> You know yep. what I'm saying? Like everybody different, man. And um, so man, like we just grind, man. We we self made, and the dope part about it, bro. Texas, we right by the border, yeah. by Mexico. You know, it's easy to get a lot of money. <laughs> you know, we hint that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And um, we just grind and hustle, bro. We screw heads. We love our culture. We yeah. We just love us. Speak on screw too. 
and what he meant to the state of Texas as well, though. Right. And what was the precedence that he set for people to follow after he put it down? Man, it was the like the heartbeat of the streets, man. Like our own thing, man. Like if you ain't have a screw tape or wasn't on a screw tape, it, it was just like that's like what solidifies you. Mm. You know what I mean? Just like what, what y'all had too raw for the streets. Yeah. Yeah. Like when he he was battling and freestyling back then, like yeah. as a youngster. That's that was that was the DVD that I, I seen them like freestyle on people. You know, make tapes and yeah. shit, you know, VHS and blah blah blah. But he went viral like before the internet, and we knew about Reed Dollars. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I had a dude who used to have all the bootlegs, and he was like, "Man, we got that new too rough for the streets." Like, yeah, yeah, and it, it just migrate. Mm-hmm. And um, even Gorilla Zo, shout out to Gorilla Zo. What up, those Zo? Like, check this out. Like one time I met him, he was like, "Bro, I used to have a, a, a DVD store." He like, bro, you you was on this DVD freestyling mm. by the car you had a bandana on and you was rapping about a lighter and he said, nigga, we sold a whole bunch of them motherfuckers. I know that free. <laughs> he like, I know that freestyle nigga. You know, I'm like, for yeah, real, yeah. bro. And it was on a, a DVD called Soldiers United for Cash yeah. about DJ Screw. So his mm. influence, bro, like he was famous, but he carried himself like a normal person. And I would have to say he's the most selfless unselfish person I met because he had the opportunity where he could have signed the flips, everybody. zeros, yeah. kikis, you know, man, everybody, the yeah. whole click. screwed up click. Yeah. yeah, big mo like to him and we couldn't do, you know what I mean? He yeah. could have signed us. He didn't do that. He was like, I just want y'all to utilize my platform. We brothers, we a brotherhood. You go make your own label, like do y'all thing, branch out, rep the screwed up click, make it bigger. Yeah. And that's what we did. Everybody was getting their different deals, and I'm rooting for everybody, man. We the screwed up click. So, like the unity, like as far as unity, like Houston, like we are more unified than we have ever been. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody have different problems and beefs and, you know, little shit like that. But it's a competition thing at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Everybody want to be the only king and all that. But as you grow older and mature, you realize that. Everybody it, a damn king. It, yeah, it could be multiple kings. Exactly. And just like back in the days, it was it was a king who ran this radius, mm-hmm. these this town, and it was multiple England kings. Got them hungry. All, yeah, all yeah. that. So man, you know, we we just we love our own. With a man like Screw that showed that much love to the community and the hip hop community, especially, what did that do to Texas when he passed, man? And how did that impact you personally? Man, it was a sad day. Um. I got in the car, we were leaving um, the distribution place, Southwest Wholesale. That's where everybody used to put their music out. Mm -hmm. Cash money, all that. Back in the days, like when them first albums was coming out, the first Big Time is How You Love That, and the Bee Gees, a true story, (laughs) and you know the early Mm -hmm. Cash Money albums before the university, Mm -hmm. they used to put their music out through there. And we was leaving there picking up a check, and I took my phone out of my pocket, and it was like on his number. Mm. I'm like, oh shit. Then I took, I hit the button so it wouldn't call him. And the next thing I know, my business partner at the time, he was like, got a call. And it was like, I just heard him. And he was like, somebody was like, yeah, screw kick the bucket. And I'm like, huh? Damn. I'm like, I knew, I know what that mean, but yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what that mean? Like, what, yeah. what, do, you, what do you mean? For real? Like, yeah. it, it was crazy, man. And um, very, very sad day. He was actually supposed to come to the studio like like a couple days after he died per se. Like mm-hmm. let's just say he died on Monday. Like on Wednesday, he was supposed to come rap on a record that I had for the Leprechaun um, mm. called Candy Cars, and uh, he wasn't able to do it. You know, obviously yeah. reasons. But um, yeah, the impact of that, bro, it was it was real sad, and um, we just knew we had to keep on doing what he would want us to do. And so that's, you know, I got I got that shit tattooed on me. Yeah. R.I.P. DJ Screw with yes, a mic, sir. with a crown. Yes, he sir. crowned me it's the Freestyle hard. King yeah. on St. Patrick's Day. So, you know, that's why we dropping projects on St. Patrick's Day. That's hard. <laughs> yeah. That's hard. Now, I can't have you in here and not ask you about a legendary beef in this thing. Oh, yeah, clip. of course, of course. What the hell happened <laughs> to cause you and T.I. to yeah. have the beef? Right. And what was going through your mind throughout the whole right. time when the hell was breaking loose? Well, 
just for the record, me and, me and Tip, we actually cool. We got each That's other. That's a beautiful number. thing. Yeah, we, we talk on the phone time to time. We we actually cool. That's right. Literally, in real life. Um, man, what from the different stories that I got, you know what I mean, that was like put out, even though we talked and squashed it and yeah. sat down with Jay Prince and we been moved past it and had a meeting. But um, it was just basically some he say, she say mm. stuff, like some chicks allegedly said something that I didn't say. Yeah. Um, Cause me, like I say, I used to rap battle. It was times I had rap battles with grown ass men. Yeah. It was times I had beef with grown men, and I'm 15, 16 years old. Shit. So, you know, if I say something, I'm gonna stand on them words. Like, yeah. if I say something, but if I don't say nothing, like, I'm not gonna be incriminated for something I ain't do. Yeah. So, you know, I reached out to try to nip it all in the bud. Like, nah, that ain't what was said. You feel yeah. me? You know, um, it never happened. I don't go to people's city telling, you know, chicks, hey, you know, <laughs> I, I run this or fuck somebody else. Yeah. That ain't my character, bro. Yeah. Like I'm a I'm a retired P. Yeah. I ain't gotta I ain't gotta I ain't gotta hate on no another man yeah. for me to get to where I'm at. I got different principles and morals. My family in military. Yeah. Um, I'm a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. I used to box, like yeah. play sports, team captain, mm-hmm. grandpa army, sergeant, all that stuff like Family Black Panthers, like, just, I'm taught to think different. Military mind. Yeah, yeah, so I ain't finna create no problems behind no bullshit. So, like I say, it was childish, man. We talked on the phone and laughed about it, you know what I'm saying? He was like, man, we was we was kids, man. We was, you know, but, uh, you know, that's what it was, man. You know, and, and I'm just glad that we were able to show people that we could sit down and talk about it because at the end of the day, it ain't by shit. It's really some competition shit. Everybody wants the number one spot. Exactly. You know what I mean? So we, we chopped it up, talked about it, man, and we at peaceful places. And that's really what I want to get into, though. Yeah. Me. How the hell was y'all mm-hmm. able to do that? Because mm-hmm. nowadays it ends in bloodshed. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Back then, everybody could live to fight another day and mm-hmm. have another beef. Thanks. It would be fucked up right now to be having interviews with people and everybody's not around because of a beef. So what was it about y'all's situation that allowed y'all to be able to come together as men and get clarity in that situation, man? Well... I mean, we had the proper OGs that that, uh, that that stepped in and didn't want to see two young people, you know, destruct over something that really was not a real issue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, one thing about me, My man, God. I'm the laid back, you know, quiet dude. I don't go around starting trouble with people. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like literally, I, I'll do everything I can do to nip something in the bud so it don't Get explode. Yeah. Right. But I'm at the same time, like, a lot of people don't know the old me. Yeah. Just because this is the nice gentleman, you know, like Styles P. What was the name of Styles P first Gangsta, solo album? Gangsta, Gangsta, Gangsta and a gentleman. gentleman. That's what I am. Facts. Well, I'm just, a, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I just got to be a gentleman 99% of the time, but I still got the other me in. I'm exactly. a wolf. You know what <laughs> you I'm saying? You alive in this thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so. I believe in staying out the way. I believe in being honorable. I believe in keeping my word. I believe in I stand on different principles. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I ain't trying to create no problems with nobody, especially if it's something petty. Like, mm-hmm. let, it's enough money for everybody, yep. you know? So I just feel like we just had the right OGs that decided to step in. But at the same time, if people got stuff on their mind, you can't, can't nobody really make nobody not do nothing if a person really want to just say, fuck that, I ain't squashing nothing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and that's how a lot of the beefs are now. Like, when motherfuckers, hey, they say it's up, yeah, it's up. Yeah. Nigga, they, hey, they spinning, man. This Tasmanian devil, man. Hey, man, say, right. man, niggas on demon time while your bitch got her legs up trying to get semen time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you feel me, But please? answer me this, though, Flip. What was it about Jay Prince and other OGs that both of y'all respected enough to sit mm. down and have that conversation? I mean... It was it was really him. He was pretty much the only person that could sit us down. Mm. Cause ain't too many people I'ma really listen to. Yeah. Like I'll listen to people advice, that don't mean I'ma take it. He the only person that I, I respect. Like I said, I respect God, yeah. my grandparents, <laughs> yeah. my dad, my yeah. mom. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But like in the order of the pecking order is like God, yeah. my dad, yeah. you know, my my grandpa, my yeah. mom, my and then Jay Prince. Yeah. Like, you feel me? Because yeah. 
he gave me something to strive for. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times when people being great and becoming goats, yeah. they don't realize how many people is sitting there like, like, damn, bro, you inspiring me. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And so like, man, I, I'm, I'm proud of everything he did. And that's, that's why I got boxers. He got boxers. I got yeah. land. I got ranches. I got cattle. I got... My hands is in different things. Mm -hmm. I got my own liquor, champagne. He got his own liquor. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I'm, we getting to it. You got to listen to everybody. That thing, Monopoly is a game. It's not a game, man. It's you know life. what I mean? They teaching us life. They was teaching <laughs> us that back then. On a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Yeah. So you know, and then we got the board game called Trueopoly that I put out during the pandemic. Yeah. You know, the H Town version. You know what I mean? So go to Trueopoly.com. You can get that. But yeah, he was the only one that. I would listen to, and, yeah. and, and, and it made sense at the end of the day because my dad instilled me with a lot of wisdom, bro. Like, yeah. man, I don't have to step on nobody for me to get to the top. Come on. Yeah, I'm going to get to the top regardless with my path. I ain't doing no funny shit. I ain't, I ain't you know, I ain't putting on no dresses. I ain't, I ain't doing nothing to compromise myself for me to get to the top mm. because the top is what you got in your mind. Mm. Your, your definition of success might be different from mine. Mm -hmm. My mine is making more money than the average person and being able to work when I want to. Mm. That's my definition. Now my last goal is to have a billion dollars. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I'm like, you know, about a hundred million, well, nine hundred million from that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Come on, it's cool. Yeah. We working, you know. <laughs> the valuation of Exotic Pop and other other companies, the Shells.com shit, and the Joe Son stuff I'm doing with King Lee, like man, you know we. We 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 get into the bags, man. Talk to me about the hustle acumen outside of rap music, though, man. And why was it so important for you to make sure that you diversified your hustle, man? Because a lot of artists, if and when stuff happened to them, mm -hmm. whether they get locked up, won't let, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, whether they get locked up, can't play bond, pay bond, but got. Paragamo bits and Fix. Louboutins, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like Fix. a lot of artists, or they die and they broke, you know, mm. got to do a gun, go find me. Yeah. Got a lot of, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's like real It's real shit. out like, here. People value material stuff and image more than the stuff that, that matter. Like, like, like people want, you know, everybody want to drink the Waikisha. That yeah. shit costs if your pockets ain't right. You go be been in drunk $400 an hour. Ooh. And then you go go piss it out. Come on. And then tomorrow your phone go be cut out. But you want it while Keisha. <laughs> you should have got night, night Keisha. Night like, well, nigga. <laughs> yeah, and paid your bill and watch Moesha. Mm -hmm. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are they thinking? What are they drinking? <laughs> so... You know, <laughs> no, I feel that <laughs> priorities, man. So, then with the different businesses, which was the first business that you got into outside of rap that you realized that hell, this shit is just as lucrative as that, or if not, more lucrative? Well, when I was cutting yards, like when I was nine, I started my own lawnmower company. Yeah, I was working for this dude. We was cutting yards at all these rich places, like these rich folks like in the areas like River Oaks where I went to elementary yeah. which is predominantly white people and rich wealthy people who mm -hmm. got their life figured out you know they get up go to Starbucks and yeah. they smiling like a motherfucker because they know there's seven figures in their account yeah. whether they go to work or not come on which yacht do I buy you know all that kind of shit Facts. and they was paying us big <laughs> money and then the guy he you know was paying us like super crumbs we was doing all the work Yeah. and then I ended up buying my own lawnmowers and then Telling those same people who I cut the yards anyway, like, hey, I come back and do it for a hundred dollars less. And mm -hmm. so they started letting me cut, and I took over. And then yeah. the dude broke his lawnmowers, and then he ended up coming to work for me. Yeah. So it was an older guy trying to take advantage of me with the money. Yeah. Karma made him break his his lawnmower, and then he had to come work for me. Mm -hmm. And then I was paying him what he was paying me. When it comes to the money flip. When were the times that you saw that bread that it kind of made your eyes get big and you thought to yourself, this is what we doing it for in this thing? Man, man, like like the bread, like, like it, I had two moments like that, like a moment in the streets. Yeah. When I like, well, a few moments in the streets, like when you get, <laughs> you get your first hundred thousand. Yeah. <clears throat> you get your first quarter meal, yeah. then your first half a meal, those milestones yeah. in your meal. So I had those milestones in the streets, but like on the rap shit, like, just that that point of selling the mixtapes and doing mm. the features and like getting my songs licensed for like video games mm. and, and movies and 
like it, those were like the checks that was just like wow and then the, and then the, the Sony and Loud deal like those checks like it was just like okay damn like this this like real this <laughs> yeah. real right here so yeah. it just it just made me feel like yeah this this what it's about but yeah. I still wanted that real plaque mm. you know what I mean I spray painted that gold record that I had uh, Diamonds in Your Face with Ceno put it on my wall and then I said I'm gonna get a real gold album and yeah. I, I put a real gold album a couple years later so I speak shit into like reality and in the metaverse you feel yeah. me <laughs> yeah so I speak it in the leprechaun make it happen come on so then also I gotta ask what was your favorite time in your career where you felt like you were just having a time in your damn life and it couldn't get no better than this well a lot of people they like flip you don't age <laughs> Flip Jim and Button. Flip Jim and Button. <laughs> Flip Jim and Button. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody see me I'm like, damn, bro, you see me. Nah, nigga, your ass ain't aged at all. That's a bullshit. Nigga, be not aged at all. Nigga, nigga, ain't aged, y'all. Nope. Man. Man. <laughs> but, but what was the question, though? What was the best time you best had time. in the game? Okay, yeah, we, we were smoking some of that side before we came to. <laughs> yeah. Look, look, straight Them up. Whoa, oh, dollars shit. out. Yeah. Man, yeah, Man. we was going in. I asked, like, tell me the what question again. <laughs> I started thinking about the moments, man. <laughs> shit. But like like one of those moments, you say the best moments. Yeah, where well you had the most fun, where you felt like you were just enjoying the hell out yourself. Man, the best moments had to be around the. I had I got three phases. Mm -hmm. The phase when I was around DJ Screw. Yeah. Going to the shows, freestyling, and then having to go to school, getting out of this house at like four in the morning. Damn, I got school in three hours. Getting home, mm -hmm. those were some of the best moments. And then getting the deal. And then the game over era when I'm touring like just the year, but just everywhere with Wu Tang yeah. doing festivals, Amsterdam they singing my shit word for word like yeah. it was like damn I'm over here in Amsterdam damn that's the that's the red light district damn these are these places that was in this book that they tell you about but yeah. I'm here mm -hmm. it's one thing when that shit in that book but when you finally nigga I'm in Germany <laughs> nigga I'm in Berlin I'm in Zurich I'm in Japan nigga they bowing down Kanichi yeah. Bar nigga Hibachi nigga Versace <laughs> wax on Mr Miyaki. It's a Miyaki. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Brown Beans Teriyaki. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so so that. And then right now, right yeah. now, Beha, yeah. I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> and I'm always sipping on the fool. It's true. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> so I'm having the time of my life because like I'm at the point where, you know, I accept life for what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 super accountable. Like if something fuck up. You know, if I if it's my fault, I look in the mirror and say, "Yeah, it's, it's your fault." A lot of people ain't accountable. Yeah, they hold on to things. I know every day I give my consistent, hard, smart work to make as much bread as I can in a day, make as many contacts. Like I, I you know, I reached out to him myself. Yeah. Like most people got a publicist. Right. No, I'm, I reached out to him yeah. myself, letting right. him know when I've been watching your shit, nigga. I'm a fan of it. I, I sit and watch. I sit back and watch everything. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm finna get this nigga some plaques. I say, I, I'm already looking for spots. I say, we gotta put the exotic pop. Motherfucking my soul to heal. You feel me? We gotta put some tape at the bottom of that I got you. here. I'm gonna send you a care package. Like I had it all planned, yeah. but but like, bro, I'm just I'm having the time of my life. And I also feel like I handpicked the correct artist to mm. be around me. Yeah. At this point, I feel like I have the most talented artist that I had, at, 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 like at the same time with the right mind, because yeah. I care more about how a person think. You could be the best rapper, but if you're a fucked up person, I don't want to be around you. Big Come flex. on now. Big Big, like for real, period. So Big like the fact that I got, you know, Reed Dollars, man, like he's been it, like, his motherfuckers already know his name. Yeah. And his music is big boy music. It ain't no local shit. Ain't nothing like this. Yeah, yeah, nah, you yeah. need to stick with rap. Nah, that nigga, yeah. Yeah, the state. That nigga, real music. Yeah. man ain't sound like real music. Yeah. So he got records, man. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Jay Bird, he hard in the bitch. For you know, sure. he rap, sure. sing. We call him the Haitian Drake. He sing, rap. Yeah. Then Pillar, you know, he a bulldog, Augusta, Georgia. You know, you ain't no telling what you go get. He might rap fast on your ass. Or, and and Young Nuck, he gonna hit you with yeah. that slow flow, you know. But And then Young Steph, man, this dude voice, and then my homie changed. Like, I just got a, a big shaft. I have a plethora of people around me, guitar players and saxophone mm -hmm. players that check out Beehive. Whenever you get a chance, you, do you smoke? 
Of course. Okay, I had to ask. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Whenever you you vibing out and you get a chance, man, you just chilling. You got about 30 minutes. Jam Flip Mayweather, my new project that I put out a year ago. Flip okay. Mayweather. It's a mixtape. Some of my hardest work. Jam that front to back. Okay. And call me after you jam and FaceTime me. Be like, tell me what you think and what you hear. You're going to be like, damn, this, this nigga sound like a, <laughs> like, I'm in, I'm having the best time of my life. Yes, sir. Oh, motherfuckers. Now motherfuckers want to give me my clovers because they see me freestyle on verses. Like, man, he did it. Like, all the comments. People was happy, happy. And I'm like, I've been doing this. I've been doing this forever. Every show I do, I'm wowing motherfuckers. But so it's sometimes it take people a long time to really be like, you know what? I was tripping. That nigga had bars all this time. Well, no, I think what happened, uh, Flip, is that now the internet then caught up to mm-hmm. reality. So now you're able to go to different platforms that allow you to reach mm-hmm. to your fr- uh, fans. See, mm-hmm. those gatekeepers will keep you from your fans yeah, after right. a while. Yep, you see they, what they I'm saying? Right. So that right. was one of the main things, even with the Beehive TV. It was yeah. like, I was here to make sure that people could reunite with their fans. Right. Mm-hmm. It ain't because Beehive just so goddamn mm-hmm. popping. Right. It's that no, nigga, I serve as a bridge to yes. reunite you with your goddamn people that's been looking for you all this goddamn yes. time. Yes. And yes. that's really what needs to happen in the cold. Facts. And when you start seeing that with verses and stuff mm-hmm. like that, that's when you start to see the damn reinvigoration mm-hmm. of what the hell's going on. Yes. Because folks are like, nigga, I've been waiting for this the whole damn time. I just ain't seen you no goddamn well. Yeah, now I done seen you. Mm-hmm. Now I know where to get you. Now I know where to find mm-hmm. you. Yes. Because it's a whole, you know, I'm 38. Okay. I was this close to missing out on this digital age, man. man. Okay, I, the only reason that I really had to get into the digital age, because yeah. I was in radio, so it was like, well shit, it's part of the job, nigga. Right. I gotta get on this motherfucking right. shit. Damn but right. my brother and sister that's three years and four years older than me, mm-hmm. these niggas refused to get on social media. Right. And they got little pages with about five niggas on it, and they, they <laughs> peeking around like, nigga, what's right. going on? <laughs> B, I see what the hell you doing. But with that being said, those are the fan bases. That's right. So they'll come to the YouTubes and they look at to see what the hell's going on, but they don't quite know. Mm-hmm. They not on Instagram. They right. ain't on Twitter. Right. They ain't with well, a lot of grandma on Facebook now, so I right. can't say yeah, Facebook. Yeah, you yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah, they but they are not yeah. in tune with what the hell's going on. So it's a whole generation that's lost right. people that they love. Right. That's real. And it's on us to really bring those connections it's back like together. A, I, I always use it as a um, comparison to me being like a a, a street preacher and yeah. my fans is my congregation and some people grew up some yeah. people grew out of flip some people don't be on social media yeah. no you go to my Instagram you see what I'm doing yeah same shit ain't nothing changed my lifestyle hasn't changed I yeah. was very wise with my relationship and my money and the way I do business I believe in doing great business yeah not, not good business Great. And um, promoters pay me for 30 minutes, I'm going to do 45. That's right. That's great business. Yes. I'm never going to make nobody feel like they're a lick when they book me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, bro, but I'm having the time of my life. I'm my, my, I feel like some people get worse. Yeah. I keep young niggas around me. I, I sharpen my sword. I be having a spar with these niggas on songs, man. Yeah. Yeah, it don't matter. <laughs> so when I get on a record with a nigga, whether it's old, new, you ain't go. I'm not gonna sound like I'm from the, in the '80s. <laughs> nah, nigga, I'm on them on them niggas' ass. Nigga, we, we going to war. Nigga, I'm trying to take Reed head out. We do a song. So <laughs> we trying to take my head out. Oh, nigga, shit. we trying to take each other's head out. Nigga, we sparring, nigga, yeah. for the sport. You know, yeah, yeah we trying, nigga. So I I want to be around motherfuckers that's gonna challenge me. I don't want to be just looking smoke, crazy, smoking niggas no every bullshit. song like just. Landslide, like <laughs> oh, damn, can we still sharp and still? Yeah, man. Peace. thanks. No okay. thanks. <laughs> Lastly, fellas, what do y'all want to tell y'all fans before y'all slide? And is there anything that y'all need to get off y'all chest? And how can folks contact y'all, man? Go on, talk, Reed. Say uh, you can follow me on Instagram, locked out of my verified page. I'm on um, Reed Dollars that? Official. We're gonna get that back. Say, yeah. say it again, though. Reed Dollars Official. Yes, sir. You follow me on Instagram. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. And, um, we, we got a lot of great music coming this year. Like I said, like Clover Notion, my album coming soon. Flip yes, will help uh, me get that out. Long time coming, my first official album. Come on. We got a lot of music, man. A lot of shit we working on. Visuals, music. Just can't wait for y'all to see it, man. Ow! And it, it, it sounds great. And, and to follow me is Lil Flip 713. 
Um, that's Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Flip Gates. And like I say to the artists and promoters, man, you know, we we getting to the money. We doing a lot of things. I just got a position, you know, at this place called Music Access. I am not a senior a &R, so yes, sir. I'm facilitating deals with artists and helping them get distribution. And I'm okay, consulting then. with them. And, yeah. and we about to really, really shake up this shit as far as the battle rap world is concerned. We got a lot of different things that we doing, man. And yeah. I'm, I'm in my bags, but I'm really in my film mode right now, mm. in my podcast mode. So the Truth Shall Set You Free podcast season one is almost over. We got like five more episodes. And then me and my brother A-Dot, we yeah. are executive producing WWE Ooh. legend, Hall of Fame, Teddy Long. Come who, on. You know, who stays out here. I got to hit Teddy up, too, and let yes, him know sir. I'm in the A. He's the guy that used to bring out the Undertaker. Oh, he like, hold hard. on a minute, player. You got to go one on one with the Undertaker, the black guy in the suit. <laughs> that, that's Teddy Long, and um, he actually hosted my Flip Mayweather mixtape. That's hard. And I just dropped a video, Black Badge Boy. He in it, but um, they have a podcast. Him and Token, Tony yeah. Snow. It's called Hold On a Minute, Player, because that's his slogan. He used mm. to say on WWE. So mm -hmm. when season one of my podcast is over, his is coming out to fill the void, mm -hmm. and I'm finishing up King Life movie and soundtrack. And um, like I said, if they want to hear me doing music, you go have to hear me on the artists that I'm working with yeah. or on my movie soundtracks. I okay. have comedies coming. I have a plethora of movies, and we about to just launch them, man. So like I said, man, we go fuck around more. I'm proud of you, man, doing what Appreciate you got to do. It, man. I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna, we finna add some plaques in this motherfucker. Come on, send it on we in this thing. We gonna turn this motherfucker <laughs> to an artifact room, <laughs> man, a, a, a mini museum, bro. Yes, sir. Keep doing what you do. The professionalism, dog. everything, man. My number is three, because I'm born March 3rd, 3-3. Three, three. You got yes, three sir. cameras. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So thank you for having us, man. Appreciate y'all coming through this yes, thing. Bree. High TV. Already. Yeah, right. thank, thank you, my guy. Man, appreciate you, man. Believe Wish y'all boy nothing but the best and much success. Thank you. High Radio Shawty. Holla at y'all in a minute, man. We gone. Hey, shout well, out man. to the A, man. We love y'all, man. Believe that. R.I.P. Bankroll. Yes, sir.